God was just a good God, then giving him good praise would be okay. Uh, and if God was a, a mediocre God, giving him praise that was on par to his mediocrity would be fine. But our God is a great God. And the Bible says, greatly he is to be praised. Can you help me give our great God a great hand clap of praise? Can I get some monitors, please? Amen. You may be seated just for a moment or so. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to thank God so much for uh, my being here um, today. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to share my convictions uh, with Christ, uh, with you today. Um, certainly, I give honor and give God praise for the pastor of this great church. Can you help me celebrate your leader, Pastor J.W. Hennessy? Come on, y'all. Let's come on. We could do better than that. We give God praise for him. Amen. Come on, we celebrate him. And can we celebrate this lovely wife? Amen. God bless you, Lady Hennessy. And amen, Ashton, their granddaughter. And so to the other uh, members of his family and to the officers of this great church, the other sons and daughters in ministry uh, here at the church, these uh, phenomenal ushers, this gifted music ministry um, that has blessed us tremendously. Can you help me give God praise for them? Amen, amen, amen. Um, Pastor Hennessy told me that if I really want to go to heaven, I, I need to make sure I stop by uh, the Vancouver, amen, Avenue First Baptist Church. And I told him I really, really do want to go to heaven. <laughs> so I'm excited to be here. My first time um, in, your, in your beautiful state. And I want to thank God for the wonderful hospitality that I have um, been shown since being here. Um, your pastor is just a jewel uh, of, a, of a leader. I, I preach literally around the country and I tell um, pastors and churches um, that um, oftentimes you can tell how God feels about a people by looking at the person he's placed over those people. And if that is true, it is obvious to me um, that the Lord is crazy about you here at Vancouver. Amen. Giving you somebody in the personality of Pastor Hennessy. Listen, I want to get right into my, uh, my assignment this morning. If you can stand with me, I'll pray, and I'll get right into my assignment um, this morning. Amen. If you can just play for that musician here with me. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Can you play that for me? Yeah. This, uh, this any key is fine. That's it. Yeah. I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour of the day. Is that anybody else's testimony this morning that you need the Lord? Amen. I grew up hearing my grandmother sing this song, uh, how she needed the Lord. and uh, She didn't need him because she was sick. She didn't need him because things were wrong in her context. She needed the Lord because she just needed him. She needed him because in him she lived. In him she moved. In him he had her, she had her being. So I grew up having a great appreciation for this particular song. If you're like my grandmama and you need the Lord, can you just bow your heads in the word of prayer? God, our Father, how excellent is thy name in all of the earth. We come now asking that you'd be with us. I pray, God, as I stand to share your word with this, your people. I pray that you would think with my voice and speak with my, think with my mind, speak with my voice, that you take the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart allow them to be acceptable today. I pray, God, that no one will miss you by looking or listening at me today. I desire that you get all of the glory. Be with us today. I ask in Jesus' name and the church said amen. As you're still standing, there's a word from the Lord. It's found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 16. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. Uh, the media ministry has... Um, um, put the verse um, and the version on the on the screen, and they have even taken the liberty to jot down some notes in uh, in the form of an outline, and that should be in your bulletin. Don't worry, the sermon is shorter than the outline. Look, <laughs> there's a lot of information on that paper, but uh, it's going to go quick. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, um, verses 13 through 19. When you have it, uh, these or similar words are recorded. It says, when Jesus came um, to um, the region of Caesarea Philippi, uh, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, uh, the son of man, am? And so they said, some say John the Baptist, I'm Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? 
And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, uh, the son of the living God. And from that thought, I want to preach this morning, needing your prayers and God's power from this subject, knowing Jesus for yourself. Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor, look him or her in the eye and say, neighbor, you have to know him for yourself. God bless you. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord, knowing Jesus for, for yourself. It is my conjecture, my brothers and my sisters, that all of us on some level as human beings have a desire to want to be known. Uh, it is my preaching premise this morning that all of us on some level, if you're honest, you will admit we have a desire uh, to want to be affirmed and approved, accepted and recognized by people in general, but especially by persons within our, our context. And because we live in this mean, cruel world, this world that has the propensity to leave a person feeling isolated and insignificant and insecure, being known gives a person an opportunity to establish relationship and engage in community with other people. That, that's what being known allows us to do. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to be known. Designers want to be known. That's why they put their names on the clothes we wear. Artists want to be known. That's why they sign the pictures that we hang on our wall. Businesses want to be known. That's why they advertise their businesses on billboards and, and buildings because we have a desire to want to be known. The reason why social media outlets like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, uh, all those social outlets are so popular because we as human beings have this insatiable desire to, to want to be known. In fact, somebody even listening to me this morning has probably checked your Facebook account <laughs> and trying to see if someone liked something that you posted. Because that's what we do as individuals. We're in this culture where we, we want followers. We want to be liked. We search for persons to, 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 to be fans of ours. They're members, not here in Portland, but in Florida, where I'm from, they'll post almost anything with this desire trying to get people to know them because we have this desire to be known. It, it is this spirit of being known that sets or serves as the canvas upon which this text is painted on and presented to us this morning. For Jesus, in our narrative this morning, he arrives on the coast of Caesarea Philippi. And when Jesus gets to this city, Caesarea Philippi, he sees this spirit of persons desiring to be known. Jesus sees that the goddess, the god Baal has this desire to be known. Jesus notices that there are 14 temples inside and around the city of Caesarea Philippi dedicated to Baal. Because the Canaanite god Baal had a desire for people to know who he was. Jesus sees this palatial palace made out of white marble in honor of Caesar. Because he recognized that Caesar had a desire to be known. He sees that the city Caesarea uh, was changed to Caesarea Philippi. Because Philip, King Philip had a desire to be known. And in this context of seeing how Baal wanted to be known and Caesar wanted to be known and Philip wanted to be known, Jesus raised this question. He says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Jesus knowing that everyone knows Philip and everyone knows Caesar, that everyone knows Baal. But the question that was piercing the mind of the Christ was, I wonder if anybody know who I am. Are y'all going to talk to me today? I, I believe that the question that Jesus raised thousands of years ago, it's, it's a relevant question today because I believe that the Lord is looking down from heaven and, and the same question could be asked, does anybody know who I am? When we look at the state of our government, when we look at the state of our society, when we look uh, in the country in which we live in, that same question could be asked, 
does anybody know who Jesus is? <laughs> When you see how there's deliberate attempts by those in political power to keep marginalized people still marginalized, the question could be asked, does anybody know? <laughs> Are y'all going to talk to me? Who Jesus is. When you look at the moral decline of this country and our citizens that live in it, the question could still be asked today, does anybody know who Jesus is? However, the question did not go unanswered for Peter raises his hand like Horshack on Welcome Back Carter and says, I know the answer. I, I, I know who you are. Thou art the Christ, <laughs> the son of, of the living God. I, I want to suggest as you look at your outline this morning that this, this confession that Peter makes of of Jesus Christ is, is probably one of the most revealing confessions ever captured in the canonized collection of writings called the Bible. For Jesus is, is, is known by Peter as the Christ. Can the church shout the Christ? And that word uh, Christ, if you're taking notes, Christos in the Greek, it gives us a powerful definition. It literally means the anointed one. Can the church shout the anointed one? Peter, Peter, I feel like preaching already. Peter looks, Peter looks at Jesus and he says to Jesus, I know who you are. You are the anointed one. This, this, this word uh, anointed is a word uh, that we use loosely here uh, in our modern day context. And in, in 2024, we use the word anointed almost for any and everything. If someone sings well, and we say she's anointed. If we have a musician that can tinkle the ivory well, we'll say that that person is anointed. I was preaching uh, somewhere in Georgia, and the preacher came to me and said, Pastor Jackson, I want you to taste um, this chicken. This chicken is anointed. <laughs> he wasn't lying. It was good. But <laughs> I'm not sure if it was anointed or not. But we use this phrase anointed and anointing so, so loosely and so cavalierly. But, 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 but biblically speaking, the word anointed was a powerful word. Can I teach this morning? It was, it, it was a powerful word. And in fact, the word was so powerful that only three people, biblically speaking, qualified to be anointed. If you're looking at your outline, it was priests and, and prophets and, and kings. That those were the only three people in the Bible that qualified to be anointed. If you were not a priest, if you were not a prophet, uh, if you were not a king, you were not qualified to be uh, the anointed. P Peter looks at Jesus and Peter says, I know who you are. You are the anointed one. That, that revelation that Peter makes of Jesus Christ literally was suggesting, Jesus, you are all three wrapped up in one. <laughs> you, you, you are priest, you are prophet, and you are king. I want to suggest that we owe God praise this morning that Jesus is all three. Touch your neighbor and say, he's all three. We Y'all kind of quiet. We, we, we owe God a major praise that Jesus is not only priest and prophet, but he's a king. He's priest because he's praying for us. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, 34, um, that he's sitting on the right-hand side of, of the Father. He's making intercession on our behalf. The only reason why we have survived the stuff that we have survived is because Jesus is praying praying for us. I, I got the wrong crowd. Somebody right now, you, you didn't, you, you, you're not here because you've been so good. You're not here because you've kept yourself. You're not here because you have driven so defensively, use your anti-lock breaking mechanism. But the only reason you've survived things that were set in motion to take you out is because somebody is praying for you. I'll try this out over here. The only reason you've been able to survive the accident and come through the surgery and, and walk away from the calamity is because you have a, a heavenly father that's praying for you. Thank God for Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? He serves as priest, as priest. He's praying by God for us. As prophet, he points us to God. 
John 14, verse 6 says that, that I am the way, <laughs> the truth, and the life. Are y'all hearing me? No man comes to the Father but by me. J Jesus is a prophet. He, he's the one that steers us to God. He's the one that, that leads us closer to God. Jesus says, if you want to get to heaven, <laughs> you got to get there through me. He's not only priest. He's not only prophet, but he's also king. He, he, he's presiding over us. He, he's watching over us. No weapon formed against you shall prosper because we have a heavenly father that's presiding over us. Peter says, I know who you are. You are the Christ, the son of a living God. Church, Peter knew who Jesus was. But can I suggest this morning that it's not just important for Peter to know him. You, you, you have to know him yourself. Are y'all hearing me today? Th thank God for Peter's confession. Thank God for Peter's revelation. Thank God that Peter raised his hand and Peter knew who he was. But there's going to come a day that you must stand before the judge. And you have to give an account for yourself. And you have to know who he is for yourself. The benefit, the benefit, the benefit of knowing Jesus is threefold tucked away in this text. When Jesus looked at Peter, Jesus told Peter in so many words, because you know who I am, your worth will be affirmed by God. Can the church shout, your worth is affirmed by God. If your Bibles are still open, look at what the Lord says to Peter. The Lord says to Peter, Peter, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. <laughs> are y'all going to help me preach? But my father, which is in heaven. Please don't miss this. Peter, 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 he says, I know who you are. You are the Christ. And because I know who you are, Jesus says, you are blessed. Pat yourself on the chest and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. The, the first point is when you know who he is. Your worth is affirmed by God. That the Lord called Peter blessed. Peter, you're blessed not based on your accumulation, but based on your revelation. Peter, you are what the Lord says you are. Can I pause to mention parenthetically that church, you are blessed not because of the car you drive. You're blessed not because of your worldly possessions. You're blessed not because of the money you have or don't have. You're blessed not because of the house you live in. You're blessed not because of your financial portfolio. You're blessed because the Lord says you're blessed. You, you, you are blessed because the Lord looks at us and said, because you know who I am, you are blessed. Can the church shout blessed? Uh, okay, okay, some of you are not shouting because you don't know uh, what that word bless really means. That, that word bless in the Greek makirios, it, it, uh, it speaks of an inner joy, uh, something that the world can give you and the world can't take away. It, it speaks of an inner contentment that's not based on exterior circle. I got the wrong crowd. Uh, it speaks about something um, that money can't buy and thieves can't steal and water can't drown and fire can't burn and sand can't bury and moths can't wither. It's something on the inside that that makes you laugh when nobody is joking. Makes you run when nobody's chasing you. I've got joy. I feel like preaching today. I, I'm, 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 I'm from the country, and I used to hear my grandfather say, this joy I have. Come on, country folk. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. I am a bless. He looks at Peter. Can I preach it like I feel it? And says, Peter, you are blessed. So because I know who he is, please don't miss this church. When you know him for yourself, he attaches worth to your life. Can the church shout worth, 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 worth. Watch this, watch this. Because he attaches worth to your life, your self-worth has nothing to do with your net worth. Somebody, somebody ought to write that down. Your, your self-worth has nothing to do with your net worth. I'm blessed. And when you're blessed, you're blessed in the city. 
I feel like I'm preaching to myself. When you're blessed, you're blessed in the field. When you're blessed, you're blessed when you come. You're blessed when you go. When you're blessed, the devil can't curse what God has blessed. He, he looks at Peter, sit down, he looks at Peter, and, 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 and Peter says, I know who you are. I, 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 I know who you are. Watch this. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says, because you know who I am, number one, your worth will be affirmed by God. But not only is your worth affirmed by God, when you know who he is, your work is affiliated with God. Look at the outline. P P Jesus says, Peter, Peter, P Peter, um, uh, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Are y'all still here today? Yeah, yeah. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. J Jesus looks at Peter and says, Peter, be because you know who I am, watch this, I'm going to use you to be a part of what I'm doing in the kingdom. <laughs> I'll try it one more time. Jesus looks at Peter and says, Peter, because you know who I am, I'm going to use you to be a part of my kingdom. I'll, I'll try it one more time. I used to be slow, so I'm very patient when people don't get it on the first two or three times. I'll try it again. Um, he says, Peter, um, 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 because you know who I am, uh, I, I'm going to use you as a part of what I'm doing in, in, in the kingdom. Um, um, the, the, the reason why... Um, you should be shouting about that. It's because if the Lord could use Peter. <laughs> okay, you missed it. You missed it. Um, you missed it. You, you obviously don't know who Peter is. Um, uh, um, Pete, Peter is the one that carried a switchblade to prayer meeting. Come on, church. P P Peter. P P P Peter is the one that cussed uh, like a sailor uh, when somebody said that he was a Christian. Y'all don't know who Peter is. Peter is the one that fell asleep, uh, uh, amen, somebody, uh, in church service. P Peter uh, is the one that spoke at the wrong time. Peter is the one that was spiritually schizophrenic. Uh, sometimes he act like Simon. Sometimes he act like Peter. And because people didn't know what they were going to get, they would call him just Simon Peter. Peter was the one that was up one day and down the next day. But if God could use Peter, he could use us. Tell your neighbor I'm still usable. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, um, some of you look lost, so you added three minutes to the sermon because now I got to explain it. Um, um, in, in the development um, that, that I live in, every, every Tuesday and Friday, the, the garbage man comes by and, and, and takes up the garbage, but, but when I moved into my, my home and my development, the, the development provided me with two large bins, a gray bin and a green bin. One, one bin uh, is the garbage bin, and, and, and the other bin is the recycling bin. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, um, but, but both bins are the same size. Both, 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 both bins uh, go to the curve at the same time. And uh, both, both bins are picked up on the same day. Both bins are, are picked up by the same truck. Are y'all with me today? The difference between the two bins is one bin is for re re recycling and the other bin is for trash. Please don't judge me as I confess this morning. I have been guilty of putting the wrong stuff in the wrong bin. Please don't look at me like that. I, 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 I confess. Confession is good for the soul. I confess. I confess. Ashton, I confess. I have put the wrong stuff in the wrong bin. I have put trash in the recycling bin and put recyclable items uh, in, the, in the trash. Are y'all hearing me today? But thank God the people at the recycling plant know that there are people like me that exist. And their job at the recycling bin is to take trash that's in the wrong bin and and use it in the right place. Are y'all hearing me? Th their job is to take recycling items uh, that have been put in the trash bin uh, and to use them over again. I give God praise for that because I have been put uh, in the trash by some people. Uh, I've had people roll me to the curb, uh, but thank God uh, he still recycles. Uh, thank God he uses uh, former liars. Uh, and f I got the wrong crowd. Uh, former alcoholics. Uh, thank God he uses former ditch diggers uh, and former but God can still recycle you. You are still usable. 
help me preach. Tell your neighbor you're still usable. <laughs> Come on, that's the wrong neighbor's neighbor. You're still usable. God tells Peter, Peter, I'm going to use you as a part of my program. But please don't get it twisted. He, he, he looks at Peter, and watch this. He says, you are Peter, and upon this rock I build my church. Can the church shout Peter? Yeah. That, that, that word Peter in the Greek is Petros. Someone shout Petros. He says, Peter, Petros, I'm going to build my church on this rock. Can the church shout rock? The word rock is Petra. Can the church shout Petra? Now, please don't miss this because he looks at Peter and says, Peter, you are Petros, which means a small pebble. Then he says, upon this rock, Petra, I build my church. Petra means a large boulder or found. Are y'all hearing me today? He says, Peter, I'm going to use you, but you're not the foundation. You're just a pebble in the plan of God. Help me, somebody. Um, I'm not, now, I know, I, know, I, I know that this ain't applicable here uh, in the Vancouver Avenue uh, First Baptist Church here, here in Portland, Oregon, but, but at the Antioch Church uh, on the other coast in, in Miami, we, we got people who are Petras walking around like they're Petra. I know, I know, I know. I, I, I know, I, I know that that's not applicable here uh, in, in this church. Uh, amen. The members are pastored by uh, the Reverend Dr. J.W. Matt Hennessy. But, but in the church I pastor, we, we, we got folk that, that walk around like they are the Petra, that if they don't sing, ain't going to be no singing. If they don't usher, ain't going to be no ushering. If they don't serve, ain't going to be no. I know they all have a problem here. Uh, we, we got people where I'm from on the East Coast that they walk around like they are Mr. Church or Miss Church. If, if, if they don't show up, ain't nothing going to happen. But the devil is a liar. You are not the foundation. You're not Nothing but a pebble. Tell your neighbor, you're just a pebble. Come on, tell your neighbor, you're just a pebble. You're just, I know you can sing, but you're just a pebble. I, I know you can pray, but you're just a pebble. I got the wrong crowd. I, I, I know you give a lot of money, but you're just a pebble. And in fact, if you don't think you're, if you think you're more, just, just die. Y'all ain't hearing me. I've been pastoring Annie York Church for 33 years. I started when I was a baby. Th 33 years I've been pastor of Annie York Church. And over those 33 years, I've had prominent persons of my church with large personalities that thought they were Mr. Antioch and, 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 and Mrs. Antioch. That if they don't serve, ain't no serving going on. And what the Lord did was he let them die. And as soon as they died, Service continued. As soon as they were off the scene, programs still, y'all ain't hearing me. Because we need God. God don't need us. I got the wrong crowd. You, God don't, God got other people that can preach, other people that can pray, other people that can serve. We need God. We are the pebble on God's foundation. Let me hurry. He, Jesus asked, who do men say I am? Simon says, Peter, I, I know who you are. You are the Christ. I, I know who you are. And because I know who you are, Jesus says, I'm going to use you. Your worth will be affirmed by God. Your work, watch this, will be affiliated with God. But lest I hold you too long, he says, then your words will be affected by God. He says, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Are y'all still here today? He says, and whatever you bind on earth <laughs> will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, I wish I had a Bible reader in this church, will be loose in heaven. J J Jesus tell Peter, Peter, I'm giving you authority. You have binding and loosing power. Can the church shout binding and loosing power? 
that, that, that phrase, let me hurry, that, that phrase binding and loose, it's, it's, it was really a Jewish legal term. And, and what it really means, Dr. Henderson, you know this, it literally means to approve and or to reject. I don't know if I have any lawyers in, in the building or judges uh, in the building today, but when, when, when a lawyer uh, makes a motion, it's the judge's uh, um, prerogative to allow that motion to be accepted. Are y'all hearing me? Or, or rejected. The judge will say overruled or sustained. Are y'all hearing me? And when the judge says overruled or sustained, what he's really doing is binding or loosening. <laughs> I, I got the wrong crowd. I, I got the wrong crowd. If, if, a, uh, if a lawyer wants to, to get a motion into the argument, it, it's the judge's prerogative to allow that motion to be approved or, or rejected. The judge has binding and loosing power given to him by the state he's presiding and he has authority. And that's what the Lord is telling Peter. Peter, because you know who I am, I'm giving you a authority. I'm, I'm giving you the ability to bind some stuff or to loose some stuff. Peter, I'm giving you the ability to have your words mean something. And can I just take a pen and tell somebody, your words are powerful. And because words are powerful, you have to watch what you speak over your family. Because words are powerful, you have to watch what you say to your children. Because words are powerful, watch what you say to your spouse because words are powerful. Watch how you use your words because the Bible says uh, that life and death, come on Bible readers, uh, it lieth in the power of the tongue. Uh, speak life over your child. Speak life over your health. Speak life over your church. Speak life over your body. Speak life over your finances. Why? Because you have the power uh, in your mouth uh, and God tells Peter because you know who I am. You you have the power to open up your mouth and say some stuff in the heavenlies. And whatever you say on earth will be backed up in heaven. You miss your shout. I wish there was somebody in this house this morning that knew how powerful your words are. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, there's power in your words. And because you got power in your words, uh, you ought to speak those things that are not as if they were. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the weak say I'm strong. So open up your mouth and tell God, thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. Come on, church. Thank you for walking with me. Thank you for talking with me. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for fighting my, my battles. Thank you for giving me the victory over the enemy. Thank you, God. And the reason why, as I take my seat, I got power in my words is because I know who he is. I wonder if there's anybody in the building tonight that really know who he is. If you know him for yourself, can you help me preach and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I know who he is? Come on, neighbor, I know who he is. Uh, who is he, Pastor Jackson? Uh, he's water when I'm thirsty. Uh, he's bread when I'm hungry. Uh, he's a friend when I'm friendless. Uh, he's a mother for the motherless. Uh, he's a father for the fatherless. Uh, I, y I got the wrong crowd. Uh, he's a way maker. Uh, he's a provider. Uh, he's a light in the darkness. Uh, he's a battle axe in the time of a battle. And because I know him, I give him the glory. Because I know him, I give him the praise. Because as I know him, nobody gets more glory. I know who he is. Everyone standing, I'm done. Everyone standing. Everyone stand with me, please. You have to know him for yourself. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but the most important thing you can do in life is get to know Jesus. Because when you know him, your worth will be affirmed by God. When you know him, your work will be affiliated with God. And when you know him, watch this, your words will be affected by God. When I was 10 years old, my mother and my father introduced me to Jesus Christ. I walked down the aisle. I gave him my hand and God my heart. I got to know him for myself. The greatest gift every parent 
or a grandparent can give their job, their child as an introduction to who Jesus is. You got to know him for yourself. Would you pray with me? God, our Father, we would love you today. I magnify your name. I ask now if there's somebody in this building today that don't know you in the pardon of their sins. I pray for someone that may be watching this broadcast this morning. Someone in a remote part of Oregon or Carolina or, uh, or Seattle, anywhere, Lord, this broadcast is being seen. If they don't know who you are, introduce yourself to them. Because we discover today that when we know you, our worth is affirmed, our work is affiliated, and our words are affected. Do it for us now in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. 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 amen.